Admiral's Log. Today marks a new chapter in the history of our great nation. Japan and China have finally reached a state of peace. It is a welcome resolution to what has been a difficult and trying conflict. However, the situation in Europe continues to escalate, with the French preparing for war and seemingly intent on the complete destruction or annexation of Germany. Additionally, rumours of a brewing conflict between the French and Spanish are also making their way across the seas. In light of these developments, I am pleased to announce that we are making progress in preparing a new class of light cruisers for our navy. These ships will be fast and agile, capable of keeping pace with even the quickest of destroyers. Additionally, they will have the capacity to lay and sweep mines as well as hunt submarines, making them an invaluable asset to our naval operations. It is an exciting time to be serving the Japanese Navy as we continue to innovate and grow, strengthening our capacities in the face of an ever-evolving global landscape. I am proud of the work that has been done and look forward to what the future holds for our nation and our Navy. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 13. War erupted between France and Germany. France is keeping awfully busy. Awfully busy. They're not only fighting the Spanish, they're also fighting their other major neighbor. And they're launching all sorts of offensives, basically going everywhere. Immediately... What do the Italians want? Okay. The British are launching trans or invasions here and there. So much conflict is happening in the world that it's hard, very, very hard to keep a good track on it. Um, you can also see that the, the victory point score is now also including the French. So between us, we have over 100 battleships versus three German battleships. <laughs> it's just picking on the weak. Um, I did get an invitation from the United States saying, wow, you got a nice navy. Um, I said, yeah, thank you, but I don't like you. So I almost was in an alliance with the Americans as well. It's not strictly what I want, because eventually I might want to provoke the Americans. I don't believe that they have much. No, they got a Ghana. But beyond that, nothing. I would like to provoke the Americans, see if I can eventually launch any funny business over onto their shores, but that's probably going to take a while. What is not going to take a while is my new cruisers. Because I have finally, finally, finally researched the new cruiser hull. This is the... What? I had modern cruisers research, I just had the pop-up. What the hell? Oh, it sits here. Okay, that's weird. Modern Light Cruiser 1, Modern Heavy Cruiser 1, and the Experimental Cruiser. This is going to tandem quite nicely with other recent developments in my technology. And let's see what I can build. Because I can build one class. The uh, Yumis might still have to go like a little bit more, but I, I'm going to build the Light Cruiser because the Sendai's really need replacing. They're from 1906. They're 13 years old. And technology has progressed massively since then. So, I can build either the Modern Light Cruiser 1 or the Modern Light Cruiser. Oh, sorry, the Experimental Cruiser. Now, this is sitting somewhere between a Light Cruiser and a DD. Uh, this is much more Heavy Cruiser-esque. You can see that all the other cruisers are suddenly uh, extinct. As for displacement, these things displace 13,000 tons. The Sendai's displace 5,000 tons. So the Sendai are most akin to this light cruiser type, the light cruiser 4. The experimental cruiser is 5,000 tons, and the modern is going to be up to 10,900 tons. Now first, I need to figure out what sort of role I would need for this ship. Because I have my destroyers to start raiding commerce. I have... Well, a light cruiser could do the same thing, but it's just a heavier, more expensive platform for the same task. My destroyers are fast enough as is. So, what I would probably need a light cruiser to do is have a bit of defense and then be able to start hunting down destroyers. So, if they're able to do that with some efficacy and speed, then that might allow me to start taking down the enemy destroyers and light cruisers, depending on what sort of specs they got. So, let's see. Wow, you're expensive. 
So 19 million for this hole? Why are you so expensive? Why is this hole that is smaller, mind you, by 5,000 tons, almost twice the price? It's not the crew. The hull form is worse, the stability is worse, the float oh, the floatability is much better. Basic resistance also much better. So what sort of guns would I fit? That's it? Wow, I need better secondary, or I need better smaller guns. Because this thing is a joke. If I go for the other hull, I still have the same guns, but they look a little less out of place. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a ship that intercepts and eliminates destroyers. That's the plan. I'm going to fire them with coal. I'm thinking turbo electric drive, although that is bloody expensive for these ships. And uh, gear turbines. Yeah, that's more likely. So, better boilers, please. Let's go with balanced, standard crew. They will probably be turning and burning quite a lot, considering that the enemy is a destroyer. Enemy destroyers tend to like to use torpedoes. So let's give them a reinforced bulkhead and a triple bottom hull to sustain any hits better. Um, a highly advanced tower. Oh yeah. Not strictly an advanced tower. No, 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 no. It's a highly advanced tower. Does that sit there? In the <laughs> Can you guys even see anything? <laughs> How? I mean, it's supposed to sit over here, but if you want to have an effective build, you put something like a barbette over there. And you put some guns over there, so... <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah, this is ready for release. <laughs> Sorry. So, how would you like a nice little barbette in your face? Because that looks... <laughs> oh my god. Uh this is what happens when you let me loose with a ship designer. That's not exactly working as intended. What? This engine efficiency is 47%? With a funnel that big? If I make it a sleek ship? That doesn't help. Wow. That is pretty awful. Worst? 55%? How? What sort of massive engine does this thing have? It's a 5,000 ton hull. It's not enormous. I mean, with these two funnels, I basically have more funnel than ship. And considering that this is just like a super-sized destroyer, I could pack a couple of torpedoes on it and that would be it. I like this hull. I like the weird shit you can do with it, but... When it comes to an efficient hull type, this is not it. This is absolutely not it. We're going to swap to the other hull. Um, this has a lower optimal speed. Yeah, this is even more likely to catch a destroyer, but... I can shrink it down to as little as 6900. So let's still go for 35 knots. <clears throat> let's go for the, gas uh, sorry, the, the gear turbines. Force boilers, modern tower, that instantly comes with a fifth. Wow. Ooh, that's enormous. Uh, does that even fit? No, it does not. Rear tower seven, better base accuracy, long range accuracy, I don't care about. This is base accuracy 6. This is 8, 9, 7. 7 could fit. That is enormous. Go to oil. Not quite happy with that number. Not good enough. We'll go to balanced. Just put two funnels on. And that could work. But we still got a lot of gear to install. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is going to fit very well. 
And now I'm not using the best one. Uh, Citadel, please. There. Hmm. So give them a wide beam. Why does that make them roll so much? What is going on with the pitch and the roll? Are these things too tall for their own good? No. What? Having a higher draft should fix the issue. Or rather, it shouldn't fix the issue. Because the way I'm reading this, if your pitch and roll are too high, then it's because something like basically the center of mass is out of place. It doesn't fit very well, and it's making the ship unstable. Normally, if something is so tall and you make it less less tall, you make the whole ship lower draft, that should fix it, but it makes it worse. Increasing the draft, so essentially making the whole problem worse, fixes the roll. And pitch. Yeah, right. Look, and now I got a $47 million ship. Wait, that's only saving me 6,000? Sorry, 6 million? Sold. Okay, it's gonna be a big cruiser. <clears throat> Easy. It's gonna be a really big cruiser. Why not? Okay. Guns, guns, guns. They're... They're god-awful, these 7-inch guns. They're the Mark II. I'm not even sure if this is what I need. I would rather have 6-inch guns... Um, and then potentially torpedoes everywhere. So that these things can still be effective against multiple targets. We're going to upsize these torps to 20s. Increased complement. Uh, standard range, 7 clicks. Uh, that'll make somebody's day a bit worse. They're now 53 million. I don't think these ships are actually that expensive. Best of everything, please. Semi-loaders. Electro-hydraulic turrets. TNT. Tube powder. Now, we're trying to hit destroyers. So, I'm going to need every bit of accuracy I can get. So, I'm going to boost their size, or sorry, their barrel length by 12%. It's going to give me a reload of 15 seconds. What I'm also thinking is that a destroyer is not going to have a lot of armor. And that could mean that just having like base fuse HE will be enough. This means that these guys at, and I'm reasonably expecting somewhere between 7.5 and, and 5,000 meters, are going to be blowing away through 2. inches of armor. 2.1. I think this is a bit safer. Because if they got 1.5 inches of armor... That's effectively three. Okay, we're going capitalistic HE shell. <clears throat> um, far more HE pen. A bit more range. A bit less fire chance. A bit more muzzle velocity. Reloads, 15 seconds. Chance to pen. 5,000 meter range, 3 inch. Okay. If I give them heavy shells, that should up. But not that much. 3.2. We're going to make these HE spammers. And since these guns are only 44 tons, I can just add more of them. And when I say I'm going to add more of them, I mean a lot more. Does it... Will, well, will it look pretty? Absolutely not. Will it be effective? I don't know. Perhaps. Is it going to make my experience more enjoyable? Absolutely. You get out the way. You're gonna sit there. You're gonna sit all the way over there. We got a bit of a four weight offset issue here. Can I shift everything back? No, says the torpedo launcher. I'm not a fan. Okay. Okay, maybe do I do have too many guns. No, there's no such thing as too many guns. Go on. No such thing. I do want to upgrade these to dual barrels. 
Because I got the displacement for it. It's just making it a bit difficult to put all these guns on here right now. Because I simply don't have the room. Secondaries are at least Mark III. That's helpful. Mark III, three inches. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. So the plan with this ship is to chase down an enemy destroyer, which would give me potentially three guns with fairly good fields of fire. So first you're going to be looking at the cruiser like this, and then I come kind of alongside and start hammering you with one, two, three, four guns and a three-incher. Potentially I'll hit you with a torpedo if I'm feeling particularly annoyed with you. And if something happens to come up on the stern, well, you're going to have a really tough time because you're going to be looking at a lot of these Sixers. Uh, the thing has too many six-inch guns, essentially. The stern has more than the bow, which is a little weird. Remove the torps. Put some torps there. Put some torps here. Um, can I use a barbette without interfering? No. Oh, it does fit the five inch gun. Yeah, there. This does interfere with that turret. But if I go like this, I still only have one, two, three, four, five guns available. And I'm thinking of adding a couple of threes here as well, but that interferes with the torpedo launcher. That's a problem. I really cannot push this any farther back. 44 tons, 118 tons. What if I remove, whoops, remove the turret and add a launcher on the stern? We'll go on. There. 10% four weight offset. So you're saying the gun was better? What? How? How is the gun better? This thing is 118 tons. It sits just as far on the stern as the gun does. What is going on? Why is this happening? Look. It sits just as far back. Well, the game goes, no, you can do that. <sighs> what if I mix and match like torpedo launchers as well? Yeah, that's a little better. So... Yeah, that's going to ruin somebody's day. I now have 12 torpedo launchers per side. And this ship is going to be carrying a lot of torpedoes. Because I got the increased complement for ammo for torps. So I'm looking probably at what? Three reloads? Ammo. Nine for nine. And otherwise you're going to have what? Six? Yeah. Okay, so every torpedo launcher carries nine torpedoes. So we're sporting 72 torpedoes on this ship. That is a great way to get yourself blown up. I love it. Okay, um, let's put some armor on this thing because it does have a fairly risky lifestyle. I don't care about deck that much. Let's go with two inches. Conning tower, 10. Um, increase the three inch barrel length. I don't have any casemates, do I? No. Let's give this thing like uh, 10 inches of armor on the guns. Main belt, five inch, five and five. I mean, I have so many guns. Basically, my whole ship is a main belt. Six, six. Wow, you're heavy. This thing really is bow heavy. I'm really going to need those better guns. Because this can definitely get optimized. I mean, I got one, two, three, four, five, six guns now. That's three turrets of dual barrel. But that hasn't been invented yet. That's the problem. 
So in order to fix this weight offset, I'm going to have to add weight to the stern, which is a weird way of going about it. It, it works. No, it doesn't work. I cannot even add more armor to the belt. Fine. Make the aft deck really <laughs> quite heavy. There. Okay. We're one ton shy. And I got pretty much everything I want on this ship. Is the Sakawa Light Cruiser class. Weird, weird ship. Let's go and focus on research. That is going to get me better smaller guns. Uh, both Mark III, but also a better turret mechanism. Because I think it's the turret mechanism that's holding me back. The turret mechanism is saying, well, you can potentially have like a, a 7-inch Mark V, but you cannot have them in dual barrel mode. In order to get that, you're probably going to have to go right to the research that says, I'm going to improve your turret mechanisms and get better turret designs. Turret mechanisms... We don't know what we're researching. This is also still a bit of a pet peeve. Um, because why do my researchers not know what they're working on? I'm telling them, work on turret mechanisms. Show me what the next step in the tech tree is going to be. Don't make it a question mark. It's not like my researchers don't know what they're working on. It's more like that they're not telling me. But I'm the admiral of the fleet. I don't know why they're not telling me what their reason is to keep this a secret. So in this case, this needs to go. Gun layout is um, more for big guns and larger casemates. So it is definitely turret mechanisms. I'm going to keep my focus away from this and I'm going to work on that. And as for small guns, oh, now we're getting the 17th Mark III. Right. You know what? It doesn't even matter that much. I will keep the focus on for a bit. Just to get some better smaller guns. Because it will help the cruiser. If their guns just overall improve. Alright. Let's uh, skip a couple turns and see what happens in the world. Speaking of interesting things. I'm apparently blockading Japan. Oh, sorry, uh, the Germans. I don't know how. The game doesn't explain how. I mean, I got more tonnage than they do. Sure, I just don't know where. Like, is the whole German Navy so decrepit that they now have so few ships? No. Go away. Huh. Um, I don't know exactly why I'm able to blockade the Germans. So the only thing that I can really... Well, what I can imagine is not just me that's blockading them. But the tooltip is wrong. It's the British. The British are blockading the Germans. The British have... And this is a large number. There's 13 million in power projection. Versus the 1.2 million from the Germans. So their power projection is massive. And the Germans are not only suffering from a bit of blockade. Um, I believe that the French were also marching on East Germany, but they have decided to relocate their forces. And they're now pushing into Bohemia Moravia. Because the French are also at war with Austria-Hungary. So that's going to make it a lot more interesting. Um, the Soviet Union is also on the move. Pushing into Hungary. How is that going to go? 1 million Soviets against 368k defenders. Okay. The way that the game has added all of these army things, I'm a bit of two minds on it. On the one hand, I think it makes it very interesting to see what happens on the map. On the other hand, as a player of the game, I have absolutely no influence. Which you could say, that's a good thing. Because you're an admiral, this doesn't concern you. Agreed. But as a player, I would like to have some control over the events that are taking place in the game that I'm playing. 
So why exactly I am not able to have any influence over where we're going. I mean, from a gameplay perspective, I don't think it's great. From the perspective of you're the admiral, you're not the general, you're not the president, you're not the, the, the kaiser, whatever. I understand. But it just still feels a little weird. Now, I don't think that Germany is going to last very long in this war. And beyond getting defeated in a sense that they will no longer have any ships, I think it could very well result in the end of Germany. Because they might still have some army here and there. They might still have an economy for now. That won't last. Because they're getting hit everywhere. And it's not just them. It's also going to be the French, uh, the, the French, the French taking on the Spanish. This invasion, by the way, I don't know where it went. They were supposed to go from southern France to southern Spain. It just, just vanished, just like that. Where the points went, I don't know. The game doesn't tell you. But what do I know? I'm just a lowly admiral. Well, wouldn't you say? This is interesting. Um, the Empire of Japan, me, Helgoland, is coming under attack. There's a naval invasion underway. Go figure. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that I'm right off their shores. And they only... <laughs> they only need 5,000 tons in order to make this go through. They uh, do have some ships around. So I am not at all thinking that this is not going to work out. Fortunately, my fleet is on the way. They have finally made it to the central Mediterranean, and I'm now going to park them squarely next to Helgoland. <laughs> this is the part of the, the crossover episode where the Japanese take Helgoland and hold it against a German force right out of Germany. Uh, the new submarines are ready. These are the 24 tube submarines, sorry, 24 mine submarines. So I'm going to have to start using these. Um, bloody hell. I need to make it a bit easier to sort out which one is which. Like with... <sighs> you can see what year they were built, but that's about it. So I'm gonna have to go and manually drag all these things from their ports and relocate them to Heligoland if there still is a Heligoland by the time that they actually get there. Moreover, I'm going to have to do this. I know. Uh, moreover, I'm going to have to do this probably one at a time. Yeah, three at a time. Because they cannot move in any large quantities. Bloody hell. Ready for release. <sighs> <sighs> Fine. They'll be there sometime next year, because it's December 1919. So, let's just start spamming a bunch of sub... I know. Let's just start spamming a bunch of submarines over here and see what eventually ends up happening here. And whether this naval invasion is going to go through, I have no idea. The way that I see the campaign progressing... What I suspect is going to happen is that we're going to see a couple really, really powerful nations. Germany is not one of them. We're going to probably see France as a major victor. Britain taking all sorts of territory everywhere. And Germany and potentially Austria-Hungary will cease to exist. That is is my current estimation of the situation. They will simply not have any further place in the history books, maybe beyond 1925. If, if they're able to last that long. And that too remains to be seen. Now, all of these fights, I'm not actually doing anything. Look, I just gained a thousand victory points over Austria-Hungary. I don't know where I got those. I didn't actually sink anything. Oh, the French are blockading them, by the way. And I'm blockading the Germans again. Cool story. Uh, and Austria-Hungary. It's my allies. Ah, look at that. Double light turrets. That's what I was waiting for. 
Um, okay, first things first. We're going re <laughs> to redo the Sakawas. Now with dual barrels. I will keep the same hull design. I will keep the same superstructure design. I'm just going to reshape the turrets. Because seeing as I now have dual barrels, I'm going to have all sorts of fun using these new guns. These 6-inch dual barrels, which... Well, they weigh a little more, but not that much. And it should make them substantially more potent against enemy destroyers. Let's see, if I put it... In a diamond formation like this, I should have quite a lot of firepower. And it takes up less turret space. On top of that, you can more heavily armor these turrets, I think. Ah, 7-7, seven, seven, it's fine. Okay, so I had four guns here. That's essentially the same firepower as having two turrets. Uh, the problem, however, is that you cannot fit these things side by side with the torpedo launchers. So if I want to do this, I will sacrifice the torpedo launchers. So be it. Now these are the long barrel sixes. So 14 kilometer range with HE. Reload is 25 seconds. Reload is substantial, but it's still effectively less than having two of these separate turrets. They do weigh a little more, but again, just a little more. Not that much more that it's worth it to have all these single barrels. I can also park three inchers, but I doubt that will fit over there. Yeah, it's really optimistic to think so. Two inch? A two <laughs> I like this. A two inch does fit there. It, 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 it even fits there. Okay. More guns, please, if you will. Oh. Mm, the problem is I'm going to have to refit these ships. Oh, bloody hell. Sometimes this game is so fucking clunky. What I want to do is build light cruisers. Cruisers capable of using the newer guns. No, says the game. First you build the base. Then you spend another three minutes refitting it. First you build the base. And then you refit. Because you cannot build the new version right away. If only you could. Can I build a new design? No, I'm first going to go back to the main menu. The ship design menu. And then click new design and load back into the editor. This spaghetti system of having a game is sometimes a bit tedious. Uh, 35 knots, max beam, max draft. We're going to start at the back of the ship using the rear tower 7. I think I used a different one before. We're going to use main guns, 6 inch, 1 there, 2 there. Ooh. I like this design, but nothing will turn. You sit there. We're going to put the big... Ooh, Super Funnel 3. Yeah, I like it. Does it fit? Yes. I'm going to park the Super Funnel 3s. I'm going to delete the Sakawa design. I'm going to add a turret over there. And a turret over there. And the torpedo launchers were about here, I think. Section there. We're pretty heavy on the bow, but that can be fixed. Gas turbines, balanced boiler should now be sufficient. Yep, 116%. Ox, better steering, please. Unbalanced, because we're dodging torps. All the armor. Okay. Again, same time... Or sorry, same plan for the HE shells. I'm going to go for max HE shells. That means that we do not carry as much AP, but we do carry it. We carry... Um, I'd love to tell you, but I don't know. 50% less for the main guns. If I can push these to capitalistic 2, that still gives me 34 inches of armor pen. So at short range, they will absolutely murder a battleship. But then again, they probably don't have to get to that range because they got the torpedoes. Increased complement, semi-auto, electric, all the gear... This is just a lot more tedious than it needs to be. Boom. Mine layer. Superstructure 2, main belt. Just max it out, would you? There. Uh, 2, 1, 1. 
We still got a little bit more weight to put on the stern. Yeah. Definitely a lot more weight to put on the stern. As far back as you can. Right there. There. Why not? Because it doesn't fit, that's why. Secondary guns. Two inchers. There. 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 Upgrade the range. Range. Uh, increase the armor on the guns. Increase the conning tower armor to 10. Ship's overweight. Make this 7 inch. Still too heavy. 6. Make this 1.5. There we go. The ship is really bow heavy. So upgrade the aft deck armor to balance the ship out. It's not an elegant way to do it, but it does work. And as for the rest, I think she is done. So, uh, the new Chioda class light cruisers. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. 5.5. Uh, 5.5. 5. Five point two, five. Oh come on! There we go. Five three. This is the ship as it is going to be. I am done tinkering. The range has been improved, as I researched new torpedo launchers, or rather new torpedoes, and these guys can swim a lot farther. They can swim to nine and a half kilometers. With fast torps, you can push that right down back to 6.3 and make them really quick, but also really easy to see. And I think the AI gets enough bonuses as is, so I'm not going to do that. So, that was a lot more tedious than it needed to be, but we now got a $66 million new light cruiser. I just need to take, what, 10 to 15 months is my estimation to actually go out and build them. Because right now, I'm still stuck with the old light cruisers. And thankfully, I haven't started building any of the new... Well, let's say the previous generation of new light cruiser. Because I would then have to refit them. So, Chiodas. Build. I'll take 10, please. 44 million a month. We're still under shipbuilding capacity. And soon I'll even be able to build 119,000 tons. That is big. Now, the naval invasion here does have me somewhat concerned, but I'm not even sure if the Germans can pull it off. Or rather, no. The Germans can pull it off. I'm just not sure if the AI knows what it's doing. Because it simply doesn't send any ships into the invasion, so that will fail. And in the meanwhile, my ships are moving there, but they will take some time to get there. Anyway, that's enough battle, or like a battle for today. Um, it has been an interesting episode, though. And I hope you guys will join me for the next, because I'm expecting a fight, and I need you there to watch it. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you soon for the next.